Coming up on this special edition of Falmouth in Focus, we celebrate our 100th episode with a look back at some of the people, organizations, and stories that have shaped our town over the past four years. Hello and welcome to this special 100th episode of Falmouth in Focus, FCTV's current affairs program. I'm your current host, Michael Kasparian. It was October 16th, 2015, when Falmouth in Focus debuted on Falmouth Community Television. Since that first episode, we spotlighted the people, places, and things that make up our diverse town, bringing you stories from every village in Falmouth and from around the Cape as well. Let's see how it all got started. In our first episode, we'll explore the headlines around Falmouth, get in depth with stories a little out of the ordinary, and bring you the sights and sounds of our municipality. Falmouth in Focus came about as a result of a prior program, the Village Green, back in the spring of 2010. In developing the Village Green, the idea was that staff would produce a program which showcased Falmouth along the lines of the magazine program Chronicle. With limited staff, the program was done quarterly for several years, but we always envisioned producing it on a more regular basis. As we were able to grow our staff, and with the addition of Liz Lerner and Alan Russell in 2015, we were now positioned to take this program to the next level, and so Falmouth and Focus was born. So the Village Green just wasn't timely enough for our audience being a quarterly show, so we decided we needed to change something, and we relied heavily on the exclusives that we had been shooting previously to incorporate into a new program that we decided to call Falmouth in Focus. I think some of the original ideas behind making the show were we wanted to create a show um, similar to The Village Green, but perhaps more newsy, um, where we could really inform and connect uh, with the Falmouth community. So we always wanted to make sure we're informing the community about happenings and news events, but also connecting the community um, with their neighbors and with the stories of the people of Falmouth. And I think that was kind of our original um, goal, was to do those two things, but in a format that was easy to watch, um, that was twice a month, um, and that people could really be entertained by as well. Liz and Alan, while both new to Falmouth, immediately immersed themselves in our community. And together, we developed a program that, by being produced twice monthly, was more current and able to highlight many more organizations, events, and happenings in our town, as well as provide more timely updates on municipal meetings through our regular feature, Three Things from Town Hall. For our very first episode, I remember it being uh, quite a collaborative effort with myself and I think the whole staff was on board with something, um, whether it was doing a, a community package or doing the, the three things um, that you need to know from Falmouth government. Um, it was quite an undertaking for the first show, but once we got rolling and really understood how we were going to package the show and package each segment, um, we really got it underway. So I think that first show really um, let us create a layout for how Falmouth and Focus was going to look. The entire staff had to come together to make enough programs uh, for the original Falmouth and Focus to really get off the ground, and that's still true today. Once we got a feel of kind of the calendar of events of the town, I think it became um, more simple to find our story ideas. Um, but also a lot of it, again, was just talking to the community and finding out what's on people's minds and um, what people are really passionate about and, and want to talk about. So it made it kind of easy. With the help of our production staff, we have developed a program that all of Falmouth benefits from. We have showcased well over 100 businesses and organizations during the past four years. We are proud to have been recognized for several of our features by our national organization, and most especially to have helped both residents and visitors alike get a real and meaningful look at all that makes up our beautiful and unique town. We're excited to have reached this milestone of 100 shows and are appreciative of everyone who has contributed to this wonderful accomplishment. Through Falmouth and Focus, we have a legacy of Falmouth over the years, and we look forward to continuing now and well into the future. 
I really got a lot out of my time working on Falmouth and Focus. It was incredibly fulfilling to connect with the community and members and really tell the stories of people in Falmouth. And um, I think it's just going to continue to do that because, especially because of the, the new facility here, there's really something for everybody. If somebody wants to produce a small packaged piece for Falmouth and Focus, you can teach that. You have the equipment for that. It's fantastic if they want to you know, host a cooking show, if they want to do poetry and prose and, and speak on camera. Um, there's really all sorts of opportunities here at FCTV and uh, they're really state of the art and it's just a fantastic thing to have in our community. I think Falmouth is pretty lucky with that. We wouldn't have made it to 100 episodes without our many FCTV supporters and regular contributions from community producers. The Friends of Falmouth Dogs have been submitting segments about local adoptable dogs since the beginning of Falmouth in Focus, and we've been proud to have been a part of helping these pups find their forever homes. Hi, this is Arlo, one of our furry friends that we've adopted from Friends of Falmouth Dogs. We've been looking for homes for dogs for 30 years, and FCTV, through their Falmouth in Focus program, has been a huge help in spreading the word when we have dogs that need families. We are so appreciative and we hope we continue our relationship for the next 30 years. Welcome back. We're now joined by Liz Lerner, who many will remember as the first host of Falmouth in Focus. Welcome to the Falmouth Community Media Center, Liz. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for inviting me to the special episode of Falmouth in Focus. I'm thrilled to be here. When we created Falmouth in Focus, we knew that FCTV viewers valued our coverage of local town meetings and stories about new town initiatives and services. That's why it was important that Falmouth in Focus feature an informative municipal segment in each episode. Here are just some of the town officials who have been regular contributors to Falmouth in Focus over the years. Hello, I'm Julian Suso, Falmouth Town Manager, and it's uh, my great pleasure to congratulate our colleagues at FCTV and thank them as well on the uh, occasion of the uh, 100th uh, Falmouth in Focus episode. Uh, it's really a remarkable uh, legacy. Um, FCTV is, is really the gold standard for coverage of uh, Town of Falmouth governmental events and of course uh, with Falmouth in Focus events throughout the community. And uh, one of the uh, pleasures uh, that I've had as town manager uh, is that Falmouth in Focus was uh, developed uh, during the time I've uh, been pleased to serve and really projects extraordinary information and uh, updates on events uh, throughout the community, not only government uh, related, uh, but also uh, the, all the remarkable things that are happening in uh, the Falmouth community that makes us such a special place. I'm Stephen Rafferty, the town's water superintendent it's been my pleasure to work with Falmouth Community Television, uh, getting the information out about the projects we do in the Water Department. And I want to be sure to con extend congratulations to them on their 100th episode. Uh, they're an effective medium, and they're part of the community, and we're lucky to have them. I'd like to say congratulations to FCTV uh, Falmouth in Focus for their 100th episode. I think that that's phenomenal for in, in four years to get that many shows done. FCTV has been a phenomenal partner with the Falmouth Police Department uh, as far as getting our message out about the police department. It's a great way for this department to share with the community what's going on and to have the avenue of FCTV to get that message out for us has been phenomenal. Hi, I'm Dylan Fernandez, state rep for Falmouth, my hometown. We're actually in the Falmouth Library right now, uh, and also the islands. And I'm just here to say congratulations to FCTV and Falmouth and Focus on their 100th episode. Awesome accomplishment, incredible work that this community access television provides right here in Falmouth. And when you think about what's going on nationally with our news media, and how many news jobs have been lost in the past decades, and just the lack of coverage on local issues and on state issues. It is so important that we have a vibrant public access community television to shine a light on government. It's so important that we have transparency and public engagement, and Falmouth and Focus and FCTV is all about creating that transparency, engaging Falmouth citizens in the government and in their community. So, 
huge congratulations to you guys. Uh, couldn't be prouder uh, to be a supporter of yours and, and keep up the go work. Hi, I'm Dave Vieira, State Representative for Falmouth, born in Mashpee, and also Town Moderator here in Falmouth. And we're excited today to be celebrating the 100th episode of Falmouth in Focus. It's one of the great shows that I love to watch on FCTV. It reminds me of Falmouth's version of Chronicle, where you can get to know the people, the places, and the activities of our community. But I really started uh, working with FCTV back in high school, back in the days when I used to attend town meeting to learn about town meeting. And uh, when I couldn't, I could watch it on Channel 13 now Channel 15, uh, and now as town moderator, I'm honored to have them cover town meeting gavel to gavel to continue that tradition, to bring transparency to government uh, and make sure that members of our community know what's going on. So my hat's off to FCTV for engaging our community, for engaging our volunteers, for making government more open and transparent, and making sure that individuals have the opportunity to tell their stories on community television. Thank you to Jeff Wyman, our Government Access Coordinator, and all the town employees and committee members who've helped us to keep Falmouth residents up to date about all of the town programs that make Falmouth such a special place to live. So true, Liz. And when I think of the most valuable aspects of our town, our schools have to be at the top of my list. Ryan Weber is our FCTV Educational Channel Coordinator, and he brings us a look inside the Falmouth schools during each Falmouth in Focus episode. We in the Falmouth Public Schools appreciate FCTV's Falmouth in Focus, which gives students a voice in the community. Previous episodes have featured opportunities like Earth Day, art shows, and the new Falmouth High School Theater Program. Clips from these shows have also been featured in social media to further extend the messages about student learning and success. I appreciate that Falmouth in Focus highlights the best in Falmouth education and the excellence our students achieve. Thanks to all the staff and students at the Falmouth Public Schools and Falmouth Academy who have helped to bring important educational stories to our viewers during the past 100 episodes. We mentioned earlier that FCTV has been fortunate to have had regular contributors to each of our episodes. You probably know Troy Clarkson from his weekly column in the Falmouth Enterprise. Who doesn't? And I know, and Troy, he's been a part of the Falmouth and Focus family since the very beginning. Here's Troy's take. So for Donna and me, it was, has been great being part of Falmouth and Focus since the beginning. I think at its core, this show is about informing and engaging Falmouth citizens. And it's been doing that with some great success since the beginning. So we've had an opportunity to tell some of the most interesting and, imp and important stories uh, of Falmouth for the last several years. Uh, a couple of particular uh, stories come to mind. Uh, one early on, uh, one of the first Falmouth and Focus shows, we, Donna and I went out together with uh, local activist Paul Rifkin uh, to a homeless camp uh, in, in Falmouth and actually witnessed and, and filmed uh, that homeless camp. We were very careful to protect the identities of those folks, but it was, I think, at a time when Falmouth was discussing what to do about the homelessness uh, issue and and it became very real for people because they were able to see uh, in their own homes that this problem is real and it's acute. Uh, another uh, one of the more fun uh, stories we did was when my niece and nephew and daughter and I walked up and down Main Street and one of the kids held a sign of free hugs and we were able to to surprise some people and really see uh, the mosaic of humanity and how some people embrace the kids and some people shied away from it. Uh, and, and that was fun. Uh, there was another time when we were covering one of the bad nor'easters we had. And uh, we, uh, we were down in the parking lot on one of the beaches and I felt like Shelby Scott, for those who remember her, uh, out there in the pouring rain and it was pouring on my head and there was actually a woman in the parking lot in that storm feeding the birds. Uh, and so we were able to interview her, uh, and I asked her, I remember, if, uh, if the cost of the, the food she was feeding was tuppence a bag. Of course, a reference to Mary Poppins. I think it was Mary Poppins. And, uh, and she didn't get the joke. But it was a great interview because it was, it was real news as it was unfolding. And that's what Falmouth in Focus continues to bring the, to the people, uh, not just in Falmouth, but because... Falmouth in Focus is on 
FCTV's website and on YouTube, uh, people nationwide that have an affinity for Falmouth uh, can get that kind of localized, really important news. I'm Falmouth Enterprise columnist Troy Clarkson, and that's my take. Back to you. Thank you to Troy and his wife Donna Buckley for their continued contributions to Falmouth in Focus. People for Cats is another one of those local organizations that have been providing segments to Falmouth in Focus since the beginning. We stopped by their headquarters in Falmouth to hear about how Falmouth in Focus has been important to their mission. Hi, I'm Ann Levitt. I'm the president of People for Cats. People for Cats, we find homes for adoptable kitties. Over the past five years, Falmouth in Focus has helped us find homes for our kitties. We appreciate the support throughout the years. Last year, we found homes for 241 kitties. If you're interested in providing a home for a deserving cat, visit the People for Cats website, peopleforcats.org. Volunteers in Public Schools, or VIPS, has been supporting initiatives to benefit Falmouth students since 1982, and we spotlighted several of their programs over the past four years. Here's Tracy Crago, VIPS Executive Director, with a special message. On behalf of Falmouth Volunteers in Public Schools, congratulations to FCTV for the 100th episode of Falmouth in Focus. Falmouth VIPS programs, volunteers, and events have been featured on Falmouth in Focus for years, and the impact has been significant. We often hear from volunteers and community members who are glad to learn more about our programs and the programs of many community organizations on the show. So thank you, keep up the good work, and we'll be watching. I find the program really rewarding, so I, I think that this particular program that VIPS does in the schools is really just a great model of how to um, you know, cross the boundary between the different schools and the different age levels. Uh, Falmouth is a very, very um, special community, the way they partner with one another. I think the community takes care of one another, from its seniors to children, uh, for folks in need, and I think VIPS partners with all of those agencies. And I think tonight, you know, you see a nice blend of, um, you know, all, all aspects of the Falmouth community. Thanks to the volunteers who make VIPS such a worthwhile organization. The Falmouth Public Library is one of the most popular destinations in downtown Falmouth, and we've shared many of their programs with you during the past four years. FCTV stopped by the main branch of the library to visit director Linda Collins. Hi, I'm Linda Collins. I'm the director of the Falmouth Public Library, and I want to congratulate FCTV on their 100th episode of Falmouth in Focus. The library finds Falmouth in Focus a great way to share information with the community. I was on a, a program discussing the building project in North Falmouth. Our head of adult services and reference librarian Jill Erickson did a wonderful program on fake news. And Falmouth in Focus featured the Friends of the Library's summer book sale and their holiday sale in December. We look forward to continuing our partnership with FCTV, working with them in the future. We got this bike and we won it at a large library conference called Public Library Association. It is our first year, so yeah. that's important to know. So we're kind of learning here and um, next year we'll see how that goes. We are getting people asking if we could come. Um, it's just a matter of getting there during the busy season. <laughs> so. The library's website is a valuable resource for anyone looking for information about Falmouth's past or present. Check out their website at falmouthpubliclibrary.org. Highfield Hall and Gardens has always been a vibrant cultural center, hosting indoor and outdoor art exhibits, concerts, cooking classes, and their popular holidays at Highfield Exhibit, just to name a few. So yeah, I mean, FCTV has been a great partner for Highfield Hall and Gardens. Um, they have helped us broadcast our events. We have a lot of events, a lot of programming, concerts, and so forth. You know, and as a nonprofit, um, we definitely rely on our partners in the community to help us get the word out, and they've been an invaluable partner for us. Well, I think um, Highfield Hall and Gardens and the whole community of Falmouth um, is so fortunate to have FCTV um, as a resource for us to use, and we have found it to be invaluable, and we've benefited not just from being promoted by FCTV, but I think that we've also um, found some partnerships and collaborations through FCTV that maybe we would not have found um, had we not worked with them. So it's been a great resource and we're very happy to be a member and partner with them. And Falmouth at uh, Highfield Hall, uh, we've been uh, 
uh, every, about every five minutes, somebody yells, oh, wow, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. So in terms of, uh, you know, the reception for sculpture, you know, it can't be better than that. Um, it's been really beneficial to come here and learn the equipment. Um, we're still um, going to be able to utilize that for ourselves and, um, and work with the people here. They are so incredibly generous and um, knowledgeable and experienced, and we had a great experience at, at the holidays this year, um, having an opportunity for all of us at Highfield to give the tour from our own perspectives and hopefully it, it, it sparks some curiosity in the public um, who may have seen it on your on your um, channels and and hopefully when they came up the hill they were they were equally delighted. Um, I think we're going to have a lot more collaborations in the future um, with some more programming and um, it's just very accessible in all always to, to work with the staff at, at FCTV and it's great to be a member. Highfield Hall's newest exhibit opens to the public on January 28th. You can go to highfieldhallandgardens.org for more information. Did you get a chance to get up there and see that giant sculpture on I the front? Did. Pretty amazing. It's amazing. Got some gorgeous photos there too. A lot of good things happening up at Highfield. Absolutely. The anglers in our viewing audience know that My Fishing Cape Cod has been one of our loyal contributors during our 100 episodes. Ryan Collins checked in with us from Costa Rica with a special message. Hey Ryan here from My Fishing Cape Cod, just checking in and saying thank you for allowing me to be part of Falmouth Public Access TV. It's been a pleasure. I grew up in the town of Bourne, so it's nice to be able to connect with the locals. And thank you for everybody who's started following My Fishing Cape Cod, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or our TV show on NBC Sports Boston or as a member on MyFishingCapeCon.com. Again, thanks. It's been good to be part of this program and I'm looking forward to hopefully many more years. Tight lines and take care. Thanks, Ryan. We look forward to more angling adventures and episodes ahead. Mm -hmm. Active and retired military personnel are an esteemed element of Falmouth's community. Here's Ahmed Mustafa, commander of the local VFW and chairman of the Falmouth Department of Veteran Services. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I am getting feedback from a lot of the veterans that uh, enjoy uh, seeing themselves on TV and for their family to see them doing things. Uh, FCTV has, has played a big role in helping veterans. Well, it's important to support all veterans, and these people really need our support, and we have a great venue here for doing it, and so I think the Shining Sea Bikeway is one of our best assets in town, and it's great that we get to share it with them. I'm out here with uh, Wounded Warrior Project, and uh, they set up this awesome event for us, and uh, thank you for all the donations and things that made this happen, so I brought my dad out here who was uh, supporting me through the war, you know, through the tours in Iraq. Not only is it a lot of fun today, it's a huge thank you to uh, all the support we have behind us, and that's what really made a difference for us being deployed over there, and unfortunately for the guys who didn't make it back. And uh, it's a huge thank you to them as well for their sacrifice for this country, and it's a real honor to be here today and play with such fine people and uh, get out here and enjoy the, the awesome day. This is this is an awesome event. Um, I'm very happy that the Patriots actually um, are taking their time. I know their schedules are pretty busy, you know, to kind of come out and, uh, and salute uh, not only myself but the rest of us. Uh, the veterans that are out here today, uh, I think it's pretty amazing. I really appreciate it. We received donations and toy drives from people from Pittsfield to Provincetown. We had every imaginable organization from karate studios to fire departments to the public works departments to schools. Big names like the Patriots and the Bruins stepped up too. Uh, the Patriots offered up uh, a thousand presents to replace what we had lost in the fire, premium presents. And the uh, Bruins went out and uh, did a toy drive at the TD Garden in Boston for a game that they, they had with their season ticket holders. And they also, the players chipped in uh, the money to buy us 30 bicycles to replace the bicycles that we had lost. The event ended up being a huge success. Excess toys were even sent to other military bases around the region. Although many may think of Falmouth as an affluent community, we are not immune to the struggles faced by many of our less fortunate residents. Among our many service organizations that are there to provide essential services to those in need is Belonging to Each Other, whose mission is to provide housing for the homeless during the cold winter months. 
Falmouth and Fogus, for belonging to each other, has been a very important asset. Uh, you have been extremely generous and supportive of us, not only in our large gala affair, but also in our national Homeless Persons Day, where you not only covered our uh, event at the church, which was at First Congregation this year, but you also have been very supportive of our sleep out, which allows us to show what it's like to be homeless. So we couldn't be more delighted with the kind of support that we've received from you. Uh, working with Falmouth and Focus has been tremendous for Wings for Falmouth families. Uh, it brings awareness to the community and um, FCTV is just constantly reaching out to us, uh, inviting us in, wanting to learn more. Because Wings for Falmouth Families is a not-for-profit and nobody gets paid for all of their volunteer work, uh, everything that is out there via um, newspaper, TV, everything, uh, we're dependent on the generosity of those companies. So without FCTV and Falmouth and Focus, uh, we would not be able to share the word of, of Wings. Hi, I'm Reverend Nell Fields with the Vilcoit Congregational Church, and I am here to tell you I love Falmouth in Focus. Yes, it helps get the word out about our activities, but more importantly, it keeps me informed on what's going on in Falmouth. There is so much going on, I can't be everywhere at once. I know I can turn on Falmouth in Focus, and I know what's happening around town. Falmouth in Focus keeps me informed. FCTV has been proud to be associated with many of the nonprofit organizations that provide such critical support for our fellow residents. With open space being such a valuable commodity on the Cape, Falmouth is fortunate to have benefited from several organizations that work to preserve our unique character and natural beauty. The 300 Committee is one of the leading organizations that we've spotlighted numerous times during our first 100 episodes. All that work they do, it's amazing. It is. It really is. Uh, so the 300 Committee Land Trust has been working with FCTV and specifically the Falmouth and Focus um, since the program began, I believe. Uh, and we've, we've found that we've been able to connect with the Falmouth community as we've been working on outreach and education programs, getting the word out about different conservation parcels that we want the public to use and enjoy. Um, we did have a wonderful feature on the Two Ponds Boardwalk. Uh, that Falmouth and Focus did when that was under construction and we were able to showcase some work of the Eagle Scouts and really uh, connect with Falmouth, the people of Falmouth, and let them know that this boardwalk is there. It's in a wonderful uh, conservation area right near the center of town next to Atria Woodbriar. Uh, and that uh, an, was an important community outreach project. We also had an opportunity to partner with FCTV when the 300 committee was working with the town on the purchase of Tony Andrews Farm. And the day of that filming, uh, you know, we had uh, several members of the town agriculture committee and town government and members of the public. And it just felt like it was a fun, natural way to connect with Falmouth. And as people showed up to tour the farm, uh, we had, you know, FCTV people there, you know, speaking, speaking to them, but it helped us get the word out about the project and just generated a sense of enthusiasm and excitement about what we were doing. So we just appreciate uh, the outreach uh, and, you know, the opportunity to be able to connect in and, and really plug into what's happening in Falmouth. My name is Betsy Gladfelter. I'm on the Falmouth Conservation Commission and I'm project coordinator for the Kunameset River Restoration Project. And I just want to speak uh, about a few times that I've had chances to be on FCTV or been shown on FCTV. So it's really great that FCTV has all these different avenues to get information across to people in the town. And I know people watch it because people frequently come up and start talking to me and then they say, Actually, we've never met. I just think I know you because I see you on TV. So uh, it's, I, I find it amazing that uh, so many people in town do watch FCTV. I think it's great. It's a great way for people to keep up with what's happening in the town. 
We look forward to keeping you up to date on the committee's work as they near their preservation goal of 30% open space. That's amazing. Starting from 300 acres, is that what it was, to 30%? It's pretty incredible. Something wow. for the entire town's future, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll look at more highlights from our first 100 episodes. Stay with us. Welcome back to our 100th episode special. Falmouth's vibrant downtown is a popular destination for residents and visitors all year long. Thanks to the work of the Falmouth Village Association, our downtown is a commercial hub that's enhanced by many colorful cultural and social events, and we've regularly featured them on Falmouth in Focus. Well, the Village Association obviously is comprised of members who um, live and work in Falmouth, so we love working with local people as much as we can. We love supporting the community. We love supporting who work, people who work within the community. So we're so honored and excited that it's the 100th episode. And we feel very fortunate for the publicity that it's helped to bring the events for the Village Association. A couple of our favorite events um, you have certainly helped us promote. The Scarecrows, the Village of Scarecrows in the fall. We have Jazztoberfest also in the fall. We have our holiday stroll in December. We have our street fair in the summer, so it's, it's year-round at Falmouth Village Association. Well, Falmouth and Focus has given me as a business owner and me as part of nonprofits the opportunity to promote, to educate, to enlighten people, and to um, help be part of the community. Falmouth and Focus really becomes the lens for FCTV viewers to know what's going on and around town, and it's such a great value add. One of the most iconic locations in Falmouth is Knobska Light and its breathtaking views of Vineyard Sound. Thanks to the stewardship of the Friends of Knobska Light, the Lighthouse and the Keeper's House are undergoing a substantial preservation project that we featured on our program since the property was transferred in 2017. And that is an exciting time, and you know, it is so iconic. It's on the cover of the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce guidebook each and every year. People come to know it and love it. I'm Catherine Bumpus, and on behalf of the Friends of the Nobska Light, I'd like to congratulate Falmouth and Focus for making it to 100 shows. They are a platform for a terrific outreach for the community to highlight the myriad of programs and people and special events in Falmouth that make Falmouth such a special place to be. Nobska appreciates their help and I'm sure all the other places that get highlighted do too. We look forward to the next 100 shows from Falmouth in Focus and we'll continue to tune in and watch. It is special and, and this is special and this will become uh, one of the destination points in our entire region. Uh, and, and I think that the people realize that they've banded together to make sure this was preserved. The Keeper's House restoration is expected to be completed by the summer. Not a moment to lose. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the annual New Balance Falmouth Road Race is one of the Falmouth's signature events, attracting tens of thousands of runners and spectators to our town every August. Falmouth in Focus has spotlighted some of the unique stories that surround the event. Um, so Falmouth in Focus um, does a great job partnering with the Falmouth Road Race. Um, as far as uh, race week goes, um, they do a great job of promoting the events that we have. Uh, the entire week. Um, and as far as Falmouth Road Race Inc., which puts on the, the New Balance Falmouth Road Race, um, they do a great job of promoting our mission, which is to give back to the community, um, our scholarships, our grant programs, and all that we do throughout the community. 
And we also love the fact that FCTV films the race, um, and I know so many residents love to go back and, and review their performances and their finishing celebrations. So um, it's, uh, it's a great partnership that the road race has with FCTV and Falmouth and Focus. Well, Liz, that's a wrap on our 100th episode. Thanks for joining me to celebrate this important milestone. And thanks to you, our viewers, who have made Falmouth and Focus a success. Thanks for having me, Michael. It's been a true pleasure. And as always, we leave you now with the sights and sounds from more stories from our past 100 episodes. Thanks for watching Falmouth and Focus. We'll see you next time for episode 101. Hey, get rhythm. Oh, when you get the blues, come on, get rhythm. When you get the blues, only cost a dime and a nickel a shoe. It does a million dollars worth of good for you. Well, get rhythm. Oh, when you get the blues, a little shoe shine boy, he never gets low down. He's got the dirtiest job in town. Bending low at the people's feet on the dusty corner of the dirty street. Stopped and asked him why I shine my shoes. How'd you keep from getting the blues? Said I like it with a big white granny. About the shoe shine rag and he say it again, get rhythm. Oh, when you get the blues, come on, get rhythm. When you get the blues, get a rock and roll feeling in your bones. The taps on your toes and you get gone, get rhythm. When you get the blues, come on, Judy. Yeah. Well, I sat down and listened to the shoe shot boy, and I thought I was gonna jump for joy. Slapped on the shoe polish left and right oh, with a shoe shine rag and he held it tight. He stopped once to wipe the sweat away. I said, you're mighty little boy, don't be a working that way. Said I like it with a big white grin. He bought the shoe shine rag and he say it again, get rhythm. Oh, when you get the blues, come on, get rhythm. When you get the blues, get the rock and roll feeling in your bones. Put taps on your toes and you get gone, get rhythm. When you get the blues, play the boogie for now. Shake all the trouble from your worried mind. Get rhythm. When you